So quick show of hands. Um, how many people here have degrees related to AI or are working on degrees currently right now? Hands up. Cool. How many of you have graduated or plan to graduate in the last five years with those degrees? How many? Well, all those people with your hands up, you're actually very critical to the success of AI ecosystem here in Toronto. It's all about talent. It's all about people with that expertise. And I'm going to talk a bit about um, industry academic relationships, uh, and it, which I've been engaged in for over 20 years around the world, and why it's so fundamentally important for Toronto and tapping into the amazing things that happen, not just University, Vector Institute, and other organizations in, um, in the academic world for companies to be successful. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the foundation and where we're gonna go in the keynote. And it's actually, remember, it's not about technology, it's all about the people. So here we go. So Toronto, um, you know, the success like, you know, movie stars and, and uh, uh, musicians, it's not overnight. This has been over 30 years in the development for Toronto to make this happen. Um, we're clearly one of those leaders in the world. We've got uh, the uh, more jobs, they said, uh, here in Toronto last year in AI than Silicon Valley, Austin, Texas, New York, and Boston combined. Um, if you, even half of that, even if it's true that only half of it, that's a remarkable number. Um, so very clearly one of the happening places here. Um, we talked to, you know, the University of Toronto and the Vector Institute is the cornerstone of that. Um, but also we've got some amazing funding organizations uh, with the, regards to AI. Uh, um, Canadian uh, Institute for Advanced Research, which helped start the AI fu uh, funding here for Jeffrey Hinton to come here in 86, 87. Um, but also we've got some amazing partners across Canada in Mila, in Montreal, and, and Amy. So this connection with the academic community is actually really important as we move forward for us as companies. Um, why, why is part of this is that, you know, we need to create a critical mass of people that come together. Uh, we in Canada, we are spread out geographically and we, we don't get this critical mass enough. But for AI, and particularly in Toronto, is that finally the world is coming to our doorstep. That you know, great researchers come here because there's other great researchers to work here. Um, and proximity matters. The closer you get people working together, the faster ideas exchange. And whatever you do, remember proximity matters. Your reason you're here is to talk to other people and learn. Um, you could do that over the internet, you can do that, you know, Skype or whatever tool you want to use. Um, but face to face, there's nothing like it, especially when you're trying to be creative and bring ideas together. Um, we've got the most diverse city in the world, according to the BBC. Um, diversity brings more ideas, different ideas, exchange of, of those ideas, but also understanding of different cultures around the world and the impact of AI on, on people. And that's going to be fundamental as we move forward in, in this thing. Um, so, the challenge of implementing AI from a corporation standpoint, if we look at the expectation, you know, of using technology on the vertical and, you know, taking the idea from, uh, to the marketplace, um, you know, most technologies, we really want to have this smooth ramp. So the more money we spend, a uh, little bit of money we spend on it from a company, we want to see some return. And the more return we get, the more money we'll spend on it and we'll get it up this, uh, up this nice curve. Um, that's the ideal situation for companies. Unfortunately, uh, AI is this massive step function that occurs. It requires a huge amount of resources for a company to inject into this new technology, unlike almost any technology in the world. We have to put more people on it. We have to put more compute on it. We, have to, we may not understand it. Remember, these aren't necessarily technology companies that are adopting AI. They just got lots of data. So how do I manage my data? Um, and that's a big change for this company to do. And the rewards equally could be massive, but the risk as well of failure is that you could fall backwards off this cliff and waste all your money. So the challenge is then how do we break this up into little tiny packets so that I can make some investment um, and not have to do it myself as a company, um, but work with others to break it up into smaller pieces so that if I have failure, I can either park that failure and wait till something happens or look for other solutions or, um, uh, you know, that, uh, or just say, hey, it's not just ready at this time and just move on. 
So the goal is how do we take this big massive impact from an industry standpoint of AI and break it up into smaller pieces? Well, I'm going to take the graph slightly different and we'll look at re resource investment idea to marketplace here and talk about the innovation gap. So if we look at the academic world, which is like leaders in the AI space, amazing stuff going on. And if you've, you know, this, as an industry partner, we could never do and understand all of the activity that's going on um, in the space. CV, CVPR, one of the major uh, uh, conferences in AI, um, just closed last week, Friday, on the number of paper submissions. There were almost 7,000 papers submitted by researchers around the world for this conference. That's an amazing thing to tap into that a company, we, can't, we, we just can't look at all that stuff. So the academics are looking at that world, how do we tie into the academic world? And they're looking at ideas from a product standpoint that are five years ahead. Even if they create a startup company to actually inject the product into the space is like five years away. And that's like a long way for a company. For us as a company side, we, the more the idea actually can take off, we get this curve of we're willing to invest more into it. Um, and, uh, and move that idea more into the marketplace. So there's this actually really big gap in AI where there's less and less investment being made um, in the academic world as the, you know, to take the product to market. And then for us, when we see a great idea from industry and moving in the market, we invest more. And so there's this, actually this massive gap. And so the goal is how do we get these ideas across the marketplace from the academic to, in, to industry. And that's the unique partnership. So um, from our product standpoint, we're looking at ideas um, from LG, but in general, you know, one or two years ahead. Like, what can I change my product base now with some new ideas with AI to inject there to uh, change the product base? And maybe it's new customer, um, a new service or a new product specifically because of AI or just changing what we have that's more intelligent and providing the customer with the things they're looking for. Um, and then uh, we talked a bit about academic, which is the discovery side of things, um, you know, five years. So our, the, our, is, our objective here is from a standpoint of success, of building these partnerships, is companies need to start looking at this middle ground and building R&D labs in this space, specifically that tie the academic exploration of publish or perish with the company's own goals of profit or perish. And they are incongruent sometimes uh, as you look from long term into the, into, into the quarter, what's happening next quarter. And so at LG, we've actually built this fascinating space in the middle of which we're trying to tie both sides. And we call it directed discovery in the sense that it's directed by the potential idea that we think can flow in there and impact our customers um, with products and services, but also it's still discovery. We're still doing experimentation. And I think when you're looking for jobs or looking for, for companies to engage with, you need to understand what you're best at. Are you an academic person and want to work on the academic side, you want uh, pure industry product engineering, or as AI tend to want to do is, I still want to do a lot of experimentation. There's still a lot of cool things to be learned and foundational knowledge. And we're building this lab in this space. Our, the job is not just to take, I got a cool data set, I found this cool paper and apply it to the data set. But actually, what is the fundamental understandings? That's where the unique value of individuals that come in this space is, what are their understandings of the architectures? What are their understandings of learning algorithms? And yeah, we have lots of great tools, but how do we actually implement those architectures in a real world problem? And that you can't find in papers. That's actually understanding the problem of direction and then still exploring what are the opportunities and directed discovery is sort of this unique space. So um, we end up spending about 70% 70, uh, 70 of our time in the lab working on our own, working on this directed discovery element. Um, we uh, spend about uh, 15 to 20% of our time working with the product people. So understanding where that direction is, where it's going, um, but not doing their job. We're doing it in partnership so that we're leading an initiative and when the time comes, we'll hand that initiative off to the product people and we'll support them, but we know that they're gonna take it forward. And that's using what people are good at 
you know, the engineers doing what the engineers do great and what we as, uh, as lab people do really well. And then on the other side is how do we tap into the academic world? And whether that's, you know, the University of Toronto or Ryerson, uh, OCAD University for Design, or the Vector Institute, for example, is that hands-on interaction engagement. And we spend the other side of our time with, with that. And it's amazing when you can, got a, we have a problem, and you go to an academic and said, you know, we've been working on this problem for a couple months. Here's what we thoughts are. Sit down with them and say, hey, um, any guidance? And they'll say, you know what, read this paper. And we'll go read the paper, and it's like, that turns on that way. Or they'll say, try this learning architecture. And it's amazing how it so quickly changes what we do by having that engagement with the academic world. But proximity matters. You've got to work together and plan together and, uh, and be almost in each other's back pocket to move things forward. But you also have to have an understanding, and that's why this graph is really important because product people and engineers on the right-hand side really don't have that fundamental AI understanding, as I said about architectures and learning algorithms, is they can't talk AI speak to an academic. That's why we have the middle ground of our team is that they understand it, that they can sit in a room with an academic person and uh, that ties into this vast space and have that one-on-one -on -one conversation where they can talk about particular challenges of hyperparameter optimization and what are the, the right approaches and not approaches and use those terminologies because that happens quickly. If you have you know, somebody on one side that doesn't speak that language, it doesn't cross that barrier. And so that's why it's so important. So we get two flows that happen. Is we get this great knowledge and expertise that flow through our lab from the academic side that we can impact our product faster and get it out there to our customers faster because of this flow. But we also get this other flow backwards, which is the direction and saying, you know what, this is the direction we're going as a company and we can provide that back to the academics to help focus their work. And we can also have amazing data sets from industry that we can pass back to the academics. And academics love to work on real data. You know, they create all sorts of artificial data um, and use artificial data sets. But when you actually get real data, that's where the real progress happens. And so they love working with industry that's got the real data. And we get to do that in this space. Um, so we setting the right expectations is really important from an industry in working in this in this uh, great relationships. We at LG, we've only built our lab here uh, starting in March. Um, we currently have already, as of yesterday, 10 research projects on the go with U of T professors in AI um, in that short period of time. And every one of those projects is at least a year, half of them are three years long. So we're not looking at the short-term stuff, we're looking at the long-term stuff. And that's what really matters is, from, particularly from the AI standpoint of, of machine learning and deep learning, is how are we going to integrate this in the longer term? What are we going to learn? not machine learning, but what are we going to learn as a corporation of the outcomes that will have longer term impact? So these are the things that we do in engagement. We do, yes, research projects. We do education and training. So we have, um, we actually have people coming over from Korea. And if you have other companies, bring them from other companies. Bring them here. As I said, proximity matters. And we work directly with our researchers in the academic world. And they do training courses. Uh, we have, uh, with U of T, uh, six researchers that come in every summer and they do a training course for four months. They have a capstone project that says it's like a mini master's degree and halfway through, you know, it's reviewed by three researchers, myself and somebody from our parent company and saying, how are you doing on that research? And then there's a final review at the end in which their career is dependent upon that success. But they get to elevate their capability and to get exposure to um, the academic world and that, that opportunities that they otherwise didn't get. Um, so we, again, from the academic experience, we bring the academic side in. A lot of concept experiments with them uh, in which we try to say what if the situation and give them some direction. And instead of having artificial constraints, what are the real constraints on some of their research projects? Again, finally, we have the business relationships come the other side from all of our product development, our strategic partnerships outside other companies and a unique startups. Again, we can't do it alone. No company can do it alone anymore. And so how do you bring other partners, other startup companies? You can 
um, reduce your risk by working with those great small companies that have got a great specific idea that are motivated by success. How do we drive them into this thing as well? And then we project management all of those sides of things. The outcomes are really important. It's about leadership of working with the academic partners, the corporate partners, the research partners, and our own lab in moving the ideas forward. And outcomes for us, success in this middle ground is about publish. We do a lot of publishing, and I think it's really important to have researchers in the middle, no matter what company, is to have those publishes, publishing uh, capability. Lots of learnings. It's about how do you take the you know, open data stuff and open um, architectures, put them together, but what are the learnings that come out of it? That's what really matters. How do you apply those learnings specifically to your own problem? Um, the advancing the point of impact. So it's constantly driving it forward. What is the, the point of impact that we want to do? It's not tomorrow, but it's somewhere in the future. Um, and then sharing. So giving back to the community and always you know, making our, our data available to lots of partners um, and making it available to the academics. So I think that's really important for industry to understand is that they need to share back into the community and really engage in the ecosystem. So those are you know, success measures of outcomes. They're not necessarily about raising the profit for next quarter. Um, it's, uh, it's about the longer term impact. And so we look at this as an innovation space. Don't look at it as, you know, as the partnership is we have this particular lab that's doing this thing, is we do six really important things. Yes, we do R&D. Yes, we do partnerships for our company with, uh, with uh, other companies in the ecosystem. Um, but training is really important. How do you constantly keep you, your best people in AI learning and moving forward and not tied down by just you know, deriving to the product aspect or the engineering aspect? How do you constantly increase their capability? Um, and by engaging with academics, you get that great opportunity to happen. Um, uh, we provide a lot of group coordination of, uh, that are really important is drawing other parts of your company into especially for a multinational like ourselves, is we become that hosted space. So we have, uh, by the end of next year, we'll have uh, uh, 15 of our own PhD researchers, some support engineering staff, but we also have 10 engineers coming from Korea working in our lab, and we get those connections that go on. So again, it's not just about working with the academic sides. We'll have probably 15 research projects next year, but how do we get our other partners, our other um, departments, business units from around the world to come in and work with us closely. So drawing them into and understanding the best practices. They become your champions when you go back to the rest of your business units to say, you know what, Toronto's a really unique space. I really had some great successes there. They become your champions and you need that communication internally in your company of that success. Um, incubation, certainly again, I talked about startups, is large companies need to bring in other small companies uh, whether you acquire them um, and, uh, and, and draw them in or whether you do partnerships and do research projects with those small companies uh, that may come from the academic world, right? There's many students that start their own companies up and so it's a great opportunity for a large company to support those, those small ideas. Uh, and, and finally, as, as I said, proximity matters. The closer you can make it happen, the better. In fact, if you get the academics in the same space as the industry in the same space, um, amazing things can happen. I built an innovation institution in New Zealand around uh, 2010, and uh, we actually had um, probably about uh, 15,000 square feet of open space. Literally, there were no pillars in it, and we put industry partners, startups, big companies with academic researchers in five areas, high performance computing and, and AI and wireless technology, and just created this open, basic water cooler system. The closer you can bring people together, the faster ideas will flow. That's really important in successful partnerships. So that's uh, the, the quick uh, statement of giving you an idea of where you know, these partnerships work. It's all about people. The closer you can bring them together, uh, the, the, the faster things will happen. But also understanding what your roles are, um, that you that the academics are amazing at what they do and engineers are amazing at what they do, but how do you provide these linkages? So I wish you all the best uh, success uh, for today and especially at the career fair this afternoon and uh, have a great, uh, great conference. Thank you.